Here we have a 52-year-old saleswoman who spends a lot of time working at a screen, at least eight hours per day. She's come to see you because she's had dry eye syndrome for several months, and it's become worse since she started working from home. She tells you that she's had symptoms for several weeks and they're becoming debilitating. She tells you that her eyes are red, particularly at the end of the day. She isn't on any treatment and she hasn't seen anyone else about it. But she tells you that she was first prescribed glasses at the age of 42 and has been wearing them since then. You carry out the clinical examination of your patient. During the interview, when you ask her the triaging questions and look for dry eye syndrome risk factors, you do not find any other identified risk factors. The functional impairment is relatively serious since her OSDI score is 45.8. During the eye examination, her visual acuity is satisfactory at 10-10 parano 2 in both eyes, and intraocular pressure is normal. Your slit lamp examination at a high magnification reveals telangiectasia along the free margin and foamy tears. When you palpate the free margin, you note poor mybum expression. After instilling a drop of fluorescin, you can see superficial punctate keratitis inferior to the eyelid. Blinking analysis is pathological since blinking is incomplete in this patient and breakup time is down to 3 seconds in the right eye and 4 in the left. This patient underwent ocular surface analysis using the lacry diag. You can see severe mybomian gland atrophy in the mybography images. Interferometry is also abnormal, with a weak meshwork as you can see. You therefore diagnose evaporative dry eye syndrome with moderate mybomian gland dysfunction. Patient education, particularly explaining the physiopathology of dry eye, is essential to improve treatment compliance. Initially, you will prescribe this patient preservative-free artificial tears alongside eyelid care. She will also benefit from blinking exercises. You will see her again for a checkup in a few months. At her checkup a few months later, treatment compliance is good. Unfortunately, her symptoms are only partially improved. Appreciable functional impairment is ongoing, with moderate mybomian gland dysfunction upon examination. In this context, you decide to begin IPL treatment while maintaining the symptomatic treatment. The LACRI-STIM IPL treatment protocol comprises three sessions of D0, D15 and D45, with four shots per side per session and fluents ranging from 8 to 12 joules per square centimetre. As you can see in the images, it's essential that both doctor and patient wear protective goggles throughout the procedure. Three months after these IPL sessions, the patient reports a clear improvement in her symptoms since her OSDI score is down from 45.8 at the start of treatment to 27.08 after three months. She no longer has any functional impairment. Slit lamp examination reveals an improvement in her mybomian gland dysfunction with better mybum quality and expression. As you can see in the lacry diag ocular surface analysis images, Nybut is much improved since it's gone from 3.8 seconds on D0 to 9.5 seconds after three months. In conclusion, LACRI-STEM IPL treatment is effective on the lipid layer of the tear film and can be offered when symptomatic treatment is insufficient, alone or in combination with other mybomian gland treatments.